Perfect. Thank you. So, 24 hours ago, I was sitting in the Gaza Strip as part of my reserve duty, and now I'm here, and it's super exciting. So, I really hope everything works. This morning it worked, but uh, if it won't be perfect, my apologize. So, let's start. Shifting left performance testing using K6. Um, let's wait one more second. And, oh crap, I'm now I'm getting a pager duty. Oh, I see. Rabbit um, latency. Ah, who doesn't uh, like production issues, uh, especially on, on events? So, Amazon measured that every second costs them around $1.6 billion in dollars. And in your organization, who is responsible for performance tests? Please raise your hand. Is it the developers? QA? Anyone? DevOps? No one? Okay, so the customers, I guess. So I will start by introducing myself. I'm Ziv. I'm an engineering lead at Iris Labs. I really like to, like, uh, love to code. I'm running. I'm doing sourdough bread and pizza. So if you like the, the, those as well, uh, catch me uh, out there. And I'm a champion of K6, which is a really nice tool that we're going to demonstrate today. And if you want more contact details, you can NPX me, uh, NPX Ziv Kazib. So the agenda for today, we're going to talk about what does it mean, just to make sure we are all aligned, and why do we think we should uh, shift left our performance tests, and how we are going to do this in real uh, life. So let's make sure we are all aligned on the defining terms. Shifting left, I asked ChatGPT to summarize in one sentence, and it says basically the practice of moving testing process earlier as we can in the development life cycle. So basically we have the left side, which happened before production, and we have the right side, which is happening after production. So I'm trying to push our performance test, doing some tests uh, before deploying to production. Another three terms which are really important is the SLI, SLO, and SLA. SLI, which means service level indicator, how we are measuring our performance uh, or what we, our objective. And we have the service level objective, which is basically what we're committing to. And we have the service level ag agreement, what we are publishing to our customers. Hey, we are having uptime of 99.9. .9. But what does it mean, uptime of 99.9? .9? So this basically means uh, the indicator will um, elaborate, or we will need to uh, discuss about it later. And besides this, when we're talking about performance, we have a percentile. We are not doing a single request like we are doing on unit test or some basic functionality. So since we have many more, many requests uh, that we are sending, we are talking about percentiles. Uh, P90, P95, five nines, I guess some of you are familiar with it. So what does it mean? Let's take an example of HTTP response time. In this case, we can see 90% of the request took lower than three seconds. How did I get there? So let's say I am having a, a spreadsheet and I'm sending 20 requests to my server. Each request I'm uh, documented the response time. Now I'm sorting my table according to the response time, okay, as you can see, from uh, the lower to the higher. And now I'm looking for the, 90 uh, the uh, 19th percentile. So in this case, I will take the N, which is 20, I will multiply it in uh, by a uh, 0.9 and I will get row number 18, which means in uh, the P90 in this case is lower than a uh, second uh, dot nine. I hope it's clear. And when we're talking about performance tests, we have basically four major uh, um, type of performance test. The first one is the load one. We have some expected load. Let's take an elevator. 
Okay, every elevator we have, I don't know, up to four people, 1,000 kilo kilogram. So this is the expected load. When we're talking about stress, is basically we are living in a, a limited a resource world. So every system has a stress, a, a breakpoint, and we want to find out what is the breakpoint. So we are stressing our system up to the end until it breaks. And, uh, the third type of test is the spike one. Let's say, I don't know, a Black Friday or some a campaign that, a, that was published. So we are getting a huge traffic in, a, in the seconds and how our system react. Maybe we are losing events, maybe we are losing, I don't know, creating some, a, having some latency in the system. So we want to verify how we are a, a working or how it works. And we have also the soak test, basically find out issues like uh, memory leaks or uh, different kind of behaviors uh, that needs the time uh, to find out them. So when, when we're talking about performance tests, uh, it will be the best to uh, run all of those, but uh, you don't necessarily have to. Why do I think it's important to have those uh, tests before production? First of all, trust. We all know that we have a system that works okay. Um, it's getting a valid input, return a valid output. It will, in case of error, it will throw an error. But what will happen in case of 100 requests per second? It gave, it's giving us trust on the system uh, to know what will happen on edge cases and, uh, or in this case, expected behavior on, in, uh, in terms of load. Production stabilization, um, who doesn't like chaos and production issues? I'm sure you as developers or uh, your customers that everything is not working. We want to make sure that production is always stable, it is always a response in the uh, uh, manner time. Another aspect is the resource utilization, uh, which basically, um, cost us money. If we're asking for one CPU, it will, uh, and we don't need it, uh, we are paying for the CPU, but uh, we might, uh, uh, we might can uh, be with lower resources, the same with memory, if you're using Kubernetes and etc. So giving us this sense of seeing our system running on load uh, can give us a really good option to fine-tune our system and also um, affecting the trigger what, when we need to auto-scale in case of horizontal or what kind of uh, tier we need on our database and etc. cetera, rabbit. Uh, so seeing the entire system works under load can, uh, can really help us to fine-tune so again, when we're talking about uh, shifting left, it can give us confidence, it can give us happy customers, happy developers that not dealing with production issues that really hard to, uh, to create on development. And we can, uh, in the future, reduce cost uh, for the organization. But not necessarily it fits for all the organization, and some of them are uh, okay with leaving uh, those kind of stuff on production. Uh, if it's not your priority, it's not, not your first concern, it's legit, it's not a red flag, it's okay, and you have other priorities than doing it now. Another thing uh, that is really important, maybe your development velocity uh, is much more important now, and you don't want to deal with it, and the ramp up to get there, having the script, having the infrastructure, uh, having the, I don't know, separated environment that have the same resources, uh, is cost money and not necessarily the organization willing to invest on it now. So how it basically works. But, um, but right before we begin, I created a really nice system for no TLV about Chuck Norris facts. Um, basically, the system has two major behaviors. The first one is getting a fact. Okay, basically, I'm sending an API request and getting a, a real fact about Chuck Norris. 
The second feature is basically sending this fact into, an, a, into a friend using an email service, and um, it's a modern microservices serv um, system. I have the gateway, which mainly uh, handling the authentication. I have the Chuck Norris service, with, which pick from the database, which is a simple CSV uh, a fact. And uh, in case I need to uh, send it to an uh, email, I will publish it through, uh, through Rabbit, and I have the notification service that consumes this method, and using some random email service, service which is basically a sleep. And all of those I'm using for the observability, uh, Prometheus and Grafana. It's only for this case, I know that every organization has different flavor of a, a system, and different um, team responsibility. So, um, and by the way, this code will be available on, on uh, GitHub, so you will be able to play with it like we're going to do in the next 10 minutes. So one day the product manager came and said, one of our customers is highly sensitive to our SLA. Without it, he won't sign, and if he won't sign, he won't pay and etc. So we must ensure all of our API response time is below 400 milliseconds at 99.9 percentile. Okay, this is my product manager and I'm off, I'm answered. So you mean our API SLO should be under uh, 400 milliseconds in P99.9? .9? Cool, let's work on it and measure our SLA. So the next thing I did is basically creating a Jira ticket, and right after it, I was needed to choose the right tool to make this, uh, to, to measure it. Um, so when we're thinking about measuring performance, it's basically a for loop that do something, reporting something, and waiting for the next iteration. Basically, we are loading our you, our API, our, I don't know, and our uh, access point to do something. But if we are uh, looking on the different tools around the market, I was trying to find five criteria that will help me to get a more modern tool. So the first thing is uh, picking the language, the scripting language uh, to write those tests. Of course, we are all Node.js developers, so I will prefer a JavaScript. Um, open source because I really like the contribution and uh, the ecosystem around those kind of uh, solution. The run environment, which is really important, I want to have the ability to run it locally and also to run it on cloud or on some uh, other computer, uh, so it will be more official and will be able to automate it after it. The automation feature will allow me to, uh, in the future, verify that every pull request is uh, not affecting my, uh, my SLO, and the reporting system is basically giving us some kind of measurements uh, around what I did, how many requests I sent, how long it takes, and etc. So, basically, I pick uh, six different tools. Uh, Jamie there, if you're familiar with, uh, which is Java, low cost, which is Python, so I skip them because I really want my Node.js developer uh, will write uh, those scripts. And Artillery, which is uh, really a shining star now, as you can see, it's already have 3,500 stars and, and also have the ability to run local on the cloud, different automation, extensions, and etc. And we have K6, which is the name of the, of the lecture, so um, I'm obviously going to choose it, but I will elaborate why. And another NPM package uh, that's called uh, Lotus, and, oh, and I can implement on my own uh, always the, something that will fit for my uh, stack and my uh, developers. So K6 um, basically was acquired by Grafana, and now I find out the observability a tools such as Grafana and Prometheus and the runner of cases creating a really great ecosystem around it. Uh, besides its K6 running under the hood uh, uh, Go, so 
you're writing JavaScript, it's, ri it's running a Go engine, so it can get you up to really high numbers uh, if, you need, if you need them. So um, let's get start with our test. Um, first scenario is get Chuck Norris fact. It's a sync flow. Basically, I'm sending an API and I'm getting, uh, sorry, and I'm getting a fact. Every performance test, I start with a planning. What, I'm one, what, my, what is my goal, what I want to measure, and then I will create the test case. Um, I will execute it, and then we will analyze the results. We're going to do this on, on those uh, two stories. So the first test uh, under the planning, I'm going to run only low tests because I don't have time, but uh, we can do on the break uh, running more complicated uh, scenarios together. My goal is to run a test and happy flow of authenticated user. No data is needed in this case. The scenario is basically I'm going to run on, this t on the first 10 seconds, 10 requests in parallel, then I'm going to be increased into 100, then it will be stable for 30 seconds, and then it will tear down. Um, I'm going to run it locally because I don't want to rely on the Wi-Fi here. And the expected results, like the product managers told me, they are expecting to have lower uh, than 400 milliseconds. Uh, in terms of error code, we fine-tune it, and uh, we don't want to get 5xx types of error codes uh, from the server. So basically, if we are looking at our uh, architecture, we, are, we will run the K6 runner, sending the request to the gateway, which will call the, uh, the Chuck Norris service, will pick a, a, a fact and uh, return uh, back to the client. How the script looks like. So the first part is the, um, the steps. We can create different scenarios according to what we're going to measure. We can have multiple scenarios. We can document them and put it as part of the GitHub, so we will have some kind of baseline for future, uh, for future changes. In this case, we are having the duration, 10 seconds, and the target is basically something that is called virtual users. Each virtual user will run the default function below. Um, the thresholds will allow me to automate. In case I will, uh, won't meet those thresholds, it will fail my test which will help me in CI for future changes. And this is basically uh, the main function. We are sending some authentication header, um, a get request, and verify that the results uh, is getting a status of 200, but I can verify, I don't know, that I have a Chuck Norris on the, on the uh, message. So let's give it a try. Um, how it looks like. I have K6 running locally on my computer, as, and, and as you can see, it's now running. I have the progress bar. You can see here uh, the time. You can see here how many time left, uh, how many virtual users, how many requests we're sending, okay, or, or in this case, how many times we get into the main function. And in parallel, I want to show you that I'm added uh, for the API, the, um, I'm reporting to Prometheus how, uh, the duration of the request. Okay, I'm setting a start time at the beginning and then a, a report those, uh, the duration before um, leaving this method. Okay, this, um, this helped me to measure my time on the server side because we have an option to check it from the client side, and we have an option to check it from the server side. They won't give me the same results, and we're going to see this really soon. So let me see. Uh, is it clear that it's this uh, font size? Perfect. So what we can see here is basically the uh, report that uh, um, K6 is uh, creating right after the run. You can see how many requests it sent. In this case, 4,117. We can see the duration. Uh, the average was 7.56 milliseconds. If we are taking P95, it was 13.56. The max time was 26. It's way below the 400. We are totally fine with it. And 
I have a dashboard here, a dashboard of Grafana that I prepare ahead. Basically, we can see here um, average response of end-to-end -end around 4.44, uh, which is, of course, lower than the uh, numbers that we got from the client. Um, another really nice thing is to get to see how many resources our system was using. As you can see, the API Gateway and the Chuck Norris are using now around 10% CPU. It really depends on, on where you are running and what kind of metrics, but uh, for example, if you are running on Kubernetes, but <clears throat> um, it's another, like, like I mentioned before, help you to fine tune your resources. So, we meet, um, okay. So we met our SLO, and we have, again, we have the server me me measure, and we have the client. So if we are on production, of course, we can measure the client because it's not our, under our responsibility, but we do have the server. But we need to be aligned with all the stakeholders how we are measuring our SLO, okay? Because it's pretty critical say, that your product manager or your tech lead or your VP R&D will understand exactly what do you measure and what you don't because there are a lot of hidden parts. Sending requests from Israel to the States won't take 30 milliseconds, okay? And it's running on localhost. Of course, it will be uh, pretty fast, but it's not on real life uh, working this way. We are having some kind of Cloudflare rules like, such as DDoS or Antibot or caching layers that might affect those, uh, uh, those numbers, and it's also important to give them, uh, a, to, to be familiar with them, okay? Because they might be affecting, and in case your uh, SLO is pretty tight with the current performance, those things are going to fail you. So, and the last thing, a cold start, such a new machine that is uh, running and the lower, uh, and the caching, I'm sure all of you get familiar with different types of production issues that you are not familiar. Hey, it was okay uh, one minute ago, and now it's not. What the hell is happening here? So, um, those things really affecting when we are talking about performance. Um, another thing that I want to uh, talk about is the premature optimization. Don't want to optimize everything. In my case, the code is way not optimized, and I can think about 10 different things that I can uh, improve. But in my case, I don't need to. So don't run and, uh, pre and uh, create some premature optimization. Verify what is your baseline first. So this was our sync flow. Now it's getting more complicated because we want to measure our uh, async flow. Basically, uh, now my, uh, my user is going to send a request, but I can never know when it will get into the, I don't know, uh, SMTP server of my office friend. Is it matter? I don't know. Uh, it really depends on what you de uh, define. So. In this case, I decided that my start point will be the authentication, the, the gateway after my authentication, and the end will be after I will send the notification service. So in order to measure it, I uh, needed to put, okay, I was needed to uh, modify the code and add those uh, metadata on, on every request. So every new request to the API gateway will set a date now as a request receive time, and on the notification service, I will pick this metadata and will uh, report it to, uh, to Prometheus. Okay, it was required code changes, but these code changes will be deployed to production, so this will be our way to verify that we are meeting our SLO, and in case we don't, we can have an alert, we can have an, a page duty, and etc. So, although it's a code that it's not really a business logic, it do have a business logic uh, value. Um, okay, so again, uh, planning our uh, flow, uh, it will be a low test, and we're going to test an happy flow. Um, 
in, case, in this case of the data, I'm going to send the same uh, email locally. And, um, and again, we have the same uh, uh, goals here. Let's see how it looks. Um, OK, so send fact, clear. And now K6, run, and send fact test. It's basically the same uh, test, but it's now a post method. And as you can see, it's now running. This uh, report won't be, near, won't be uh, relevant for me because I'm not really measuring the, the results from the uh, cl uh, client perspective. What do matter is the, uh, the re results here. Um, so I'm going to refresh, and as you can see, hi. Ah, you are right. OK, now we see. As <clears throat> I can see it's now around. 90 um, end to end on the by service. I can see it's higher. Why do I? Um, okay. Um, so here I can see that most of the time is waiting under the notification service. Another interesting stuff that I can measure is how do I ma manage uh, the backlog from the from the queue. I really hope it will end. OK, it's end. And it's take time, the, the report. But at the end, I do have a, a, some kind of observability. I, my current backlog was around 40, a, 40 items on the queue. I sent, again, pretty much the same a number of requests, which is uh, not such a big backlog. But we're still meeting our SLO. Sorry, I want to show you again. Uh, around 200 milliseconds. And I do have 400, so I still have time. And async flow, it's much more complicated to, to measure. And uh, it's not so trivial. And uh, um, as I mentioned, it requires code changes, but it do have business value to do so. Um, now. The second question I usually hear is, my team is not responsible for the entire system. I don't know, it's responsible for the gateway, it's responsible for the notification service. How do I do this on, uh, on my team level? So in this case, basically for every flow, we have an entry point. So your client could be an external client, but it can be an internal client, such as a different team. Uh, if you are a gateway team or if you're a notification service, pick your entry point to the C team level system, mini system, and send the request so you will be able to know how, what is your SLO of your part of the journey. Okay, so if you will integrate into a different flow and they will ask you, I don't know, how many time it takes you to, to, to send a notification? send an email, I will be able to tell them it takes me around 180 milliseconds if, if it's good for you or not. This is our current values. <sighs> so what next? Uh, um, having uh, this flow as part of the CI CD can help us to find out if a new feature is going to break it. If we are full stack developers, we have extensions that helping us to create an automation uh, with a client, uh, with a browser uh, extension, and chaos testing is also highly appreciated, uh, and everything can goes wrong there. So I hope I convince you why we should uh, shift left the performance test, and, and there are different methods of how to run those slow tests and how to measure the time, and I hope I, it was looked easy enough for you to maybe try it on your own. Uh, so let's get started. Thank you. <clears throat>